Hi, and welcome to Grouping Students with Adult ESL, English as a Second Language. Meet Raul Fernandez, who teaches ESL in Hamul. When Raul first started teaching ESL, he taught the way he'd been taught, with the teacher standing in the front of the room and his students seated in rows listening. Oh, sure, Raul remembers. Occasionally, I'd get a little wild and move the desks into a circle and let them respond chorally, but that was really about the extent of it. Then Raul went to summer training sessions and learned something that he now considers obvious. The more they talk, the faster they learn English. So now Raul works hard to create a variety of opportunities for his students to interact through different kinds of groupings. Early in the semester, Raul likes to host a wedding reception or a cocktail party. I give them all cups of water, a card indicating how they know the bride or groom, and we stand around as if we're waiting for the happy couple to arrive. The goal is to practice introducing yourself and using words like cousin, friend, aunt, etc. There's a lot of laughing and a lot of talking. Raul also likes to do a lineup activity where he divides his students into two lines facing each other. I have them shake hands, American businessman style, and then respond to whatever prompt I call out. Then each line shifts over one in the opposite direction, so they face a new person. For small group work, Raul begins with partners, but I don't just pair them up and let it go, he says. If I did that, most would just sit there or be off topic. So for Raul's first time partners, he gives them sentence strips to read from with a blank for the part they must come up with. That way they know just what to do and their time together is productive. As they continue to work in partners, Raul will give them less structure until they know just what to do on their own. Then I move them into a group of four or five. But again, I structure the grouping by giving each one a title and a task to go with it. One is the group leader who organizes the group to keep them on task. One is a materials manager who picks up the work and distributes it. One is the summarizer who writes down the group's solution to the problem and one is the group reporter who will share the findings with the class at the end of the session. If there's a fifth member, that's the timekeeper. I swap their group roles every time so each gets a chance to try each role. Once they have mastered and are fairly efficient in their groups, Raul likes to have them jigsaw in slightly larger groups labeled A through G. This time he numbers each person in the letter group one through six and then all the ones meet at a table and read and discuss an article or topic, while the other numbers meet together doing the same activity with a different piece of the content. Then, after 15 or 20 minutes, Raul has them go back to their original letter group and teach their group what they learned in the number group. They pay better attention, knowing they have to teach their own group the content. Because Raul shares his classroom with a high school teacher who does not like to find his desks in a whole new configuration, Raul had to come up with a quick and easy solution to get his classroom back together. In the beginning, I did it myself after class, and it took forever. But then a friend shared his desk Olympics idea with me. He first taught his students exactly how the desks should look when they were in rows. Back touching desk, desk width apart, in straight rows. Then he showed them exactly how to lift the desk, where to put their hands, how to bend their knees, etc. Then he showed them how they look in a group, like a pinwheel with edges touching. He had them practice moving into and out of that configuration slowly, carefully, and perfectly. He coached them on their technique and praised them heavily. Then he timed them. Using a stopwatch, he gave them three tries to get their best score for fast and perfect. They were competing with his other classes for a no homework night. I only have the one class, Raul says, so I have them compete against themselves. And if they can do it in under a minute, they win. And they always do. It takes about 15 minutes to teach, but for the rest of the semester, they move those desks like athletes and no more crabby notes from the day teacher. Later in the semester, Raul likes to do a gallery walk. It's right after they do their community resource poster project. I put everything up in the hallway the way you would see it in an art gallery. And then they walk by and view the work and ask questions of the artist. It's another way to create an opportunity for more of them to talk, to read, and to ask authentic questions about information that matters. Community resources are a huge area of interest for my students, particularly resources for their children. 
It's all about making conversation meaningful and fun too, Raul says. Thanks for watching.